Whew. What is going on, you guys? Welcome back. Ben the Bane Davis here. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great weekend. We had some interesting fights. Tank Davis, Alex Perez uh, versus Tatsuro Tyra, which turned out to be a, a solid fight. I mean, it ended in a bit of an injury and a frustrating finishing sequence, but I thought it was a good scrap. I thought... Tyra showed some new wrinkles, definitely proved he's got that chin on him, which he absolutely needs at 125. Some of those guys swing hammers. And I, I really liked what I was seeing from Alex Perez. You know, this was the year of the comeback uh, for a guy who was inactive for, I think, two or three years. Um, hadn't won a ton ahead of that layoff and just came back and was lighting it up. So it's frustrating for him. And I, I really empathize with the injury that he sustained. Because that's going to set him back significantly in terms of healing, in terms of career progression. But I think he proved he can hang with the top. And when he does come back healthily, he's going to be right back in the mix. Today, I want to talk about some UFC opinions that are a little controversial. That'll have you up against a wall. That'll maybe cause a bar fight if you let him rip inside of a, <laughs> a, uh, a bar. So uh, let's get right into it. This is from the Sports Alien. Great dude. Uh, go give him a follow on Twitter. And I just like the thread. I like this idea here. And we're going to jump right into it with Tony would have beat Habib Nurmagomedov. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Like Prime Tony versus Prime Khabib is a fight that we've always wanted. It's something that we'll never get. Um, but when you look at how Tony was beaten by Benil Dariush, Charles Oliveira... Even the Bobby Green and Patty Pimblett fights, which are really past prime, and I wouldn't say reflective of Tony's true former peak of abilities and talent, but there's just this clear grappling deficiency in the in the sense of uh, wrestling defense. You know, he clearly has a big hole in the arsenal of takedown defense. And in my opinion, if Prime Khabib and Prime Tony Ferguson fought bar for bar. Best for best. Khabib mauls him. I think Khabib gets him down. I think splits him open. And I think all of the unorthodox, awkward, you know, aspects of Ferguson's game that make him such a fan favorite and that uh, that made him so beloved just wouldn't work against Khabib. And it would be a pretty depressing affair, much like Gaethje and Ferguson turned out to be. So, interesting first one. I like it. We need something spicier. McGregor versus Cerrone was fixed. Conor McGregor versus Donald Cerrone was fixed. Um, it wasn't fixed, just some just shit and favoritism matchmaking. Yeah, it could just be Cerrone was washed, but it could also be, here's a fat bag of cash, we need McGregor to win so we can keep the money train going. This is an interesting conspiracy, right? Which I don't know if I would say is the point of this thread in particular, um, but uh, like a ultimate UFC conspiracy thread, that would fit perfectly in there. Did Donald Cerrone take a dive against Conor McGregor? My answer is no. I think at that point in his career, Donald was pretty washed and not durable he couldn't take damage and McGregor is a historically fast starter it was like the biggest stylistic layup I think that we've seen in a while and, and especially within that year I don't think that this guy's on the mark with oh here's a fat bag um you know go lose against McGregor because Donald Cerrone famously said that he didn't negotiate that he didn't um you know really barter with the UFC for more money he just took whatever his show win was at that point in time in his contract to fight Connor which I think is stupid that's the dumbest move of all time because then a couple years removed from that decision he's going oh I should have you know I'm so dumb I should have <laughs> negotiated yeah, genius. Probably. <laughs> uh, but if you watch my recent video on Donald Cerrone, then I don't know if I would ever say that he's guilty of the smartest decision making. So after the Gaethje fight, there was no one under 185 who could beat Khabib. He literally had nothing left to prove and he should not come back. So this is this is interesting because um, I, and I like that. That's a take that gets a little bit saucy. So Khabib versus Gaethje was in 2020, so October of 2020. So if we go to the welterweight rankings in 2020, because um, I, I believe there's a, a way back machine, right, that we can utilize. So here's um, October 1st, 2020. So this is this would be pretty much right after uh, that event. 
So welterweight, middleweight. So Kamaru Usman, Gilbert Burns, Colby Covington, Masvidal, and Leon Edwards within the top five at 170 pounds. Would Habib Nurmagomedov be able to beat, at that point, I would say, like, prime Kamaru Usman? Hmm. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Then you go up to 185, Adesanya, Whitaker, Costa, Romero, Cannoneer. I think Khabib beats Covington. I think he, he beats Gilbert Burns. He beats Mavs at all. Beats Woodley. Beats Diaz. Destroys Diaz. Beats Kiesa. Beats Douglas Lima. I would say definitely beats these two. Yeah, it really boils down to Edwards and Usman. But 2020 Edwards, I think Khabib could beat. Um, but 2020 Usman versus... 2020 Khabib. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure who wins that one, actually. It's a good question. I'm going to go with Usman. But could be wrong. I mean, hey, let, let me know your, your thoughts down below. Adesanya is the best striker in UFC history. I don't know if I would say that that's like a... Because I can't say recency bias because, obviously, he doesn't have the belt anymore <laughs> and hasn't won in uh, a little bit. But Israel Adesanya's striking is some of the top, top Stand up, I would say, all time. But best striker in UFC history. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't. I mean, obviously, the the go-to answer would be Prime Anderson Silva. But then you could say, ah, his competition level maybe wasn't the same as Israel Adesanya. So that's an interesting one. I feel like you could definitely argue that for a good 20, 30 minutes. Adesanya is a better striker than Alex Pereira. Pereira just has 20 plus more pounds of muscle. I think that that's an understandable take in terms of depth. Maybe Adesanya's depth of offense is a little bit more varied than Pereira's. Uh, but, I mean, the calf kick and the left hook combo is undefeated. Like, that's all he has needed. And the fact that it's worked against Adesanya, right, multiple times, could you then f twist the argument and say, uh, well... Alex Pere has beaten him, knocked him out on two different spots. So who is the better striker? Right? I think that's that's something that you could uh you could go back and forth on. I think Adesanya has a little bit more nuance to the game of striking. I think I, I, I like Izzy's feints. I know that we all like to clown on like the, the constant hip feints and things like that, but he really is a master at throwing this this uh, entire smoke show of offense and then just hits you with a leg kick. And you're like, well, what was all this for? Uh, Bilal Muhammad's just as compelling of a villain as Chael Sonnen was. I, I'm sorry. Bilal's my guy. I disagree with this completely. I don't know in terms of compelling because Chael Sonnen on the microphone is one of, if not the best um, of all time in combat sports. He is the one of the greatest shit talkers, period. Bilal Muhammad is not that. Um, I think that he's a great foil. I think Bilal Muhammad's a fantastic foil for, you know, Leon Edwards. And um, I do think that Bilal's going to put up a very competitive fight in Manchester. If he wins, I wouldn't be shocked. He's got a great game. Um, but but just with this comparison right here, just as compelling of a villain as Chael Sonnen was, no. Here's one that I, I think is not... Again, I feel like the, these people are missing the point of the thread. This isn't supposed to be, you know, <laughs> understandable takes. Izzy will completely outclass Drickus Duplessis. I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, I just got done saying how nuanced his offensive game is and how he's got so many tools and, and the utility belt of Adesanya is quite varied. Drickus Duplessis is... He objectively makes terrible in-game decisions uh pulling Derek Brunson on top of him trying to do this weird lateral drop and then just giving Derek full mount uh th the second round against Darren Till where he just completely allowed Darren back into the fight all of the errant shots that he throws and the weird technique and form that I just don't think he's going to be able to touch Adesanya with yes I I would agree that Israel Adesanya should completely outclass Trickus Duplessis. Um, if the Izzy that you know has shown up in, in most of his UFC fights shows up, it's going to be a bad day for Trickus. The problem is that 
up until this point, nobody has been able to just out stupid DDP. This guy is the most bizarre fighter I have ever seen. He does random things and it just works. And I, I unfortunately am at a position where I can't count against this guy. He's like 7-0 and inside the UFC. Most of those are stoppages. Uh, wins over Robert Whitaker. Uh, a very impressive one at that. Uh, the performance against Sean Strickland, who had just dominated Adesanya. Like, I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't bet against Drakus Duplessis. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I agree on paper, right? But man, things could get quite interesting. Uh, in the third fight, Holloway had a bad day. Volkanovski probably would have had one anyway, but not winning like he did. Which is something that Holloway has said. He's he's been vocal about how you know what that night. Alex was just on. Volk had my number that night, and game's the game, which I think is a very mature way of looking at it from Holloway's perspective and one that I completely agree with. That night, he was just the best in the world at 145, um, and, and it was the most impressive win that he had against Holloway. I would say his most impressive performance inside the UFC. Um, sometimes you just, you just you, you, you turn it on, right, and everything's just operating at 100%. Benio Darius would have beaten Islam, or at least given Islam his most competitive fight in a while, if Benio never pulled out. I kind of disagree with this, honestly. I kind of disagree with that take. I think this that fits for this thread. Um, Benio Darius has shown, not just recently, but historically, a big issue with durability. I mean, the Edson Barboza knockout, the Hernandez knockout, even in that Drakkar close fight with how stunned he was. And then you could fast forward to Armin Saryukian knocking him out in 64 seconds, Charles Oliveira finishing him in the fashion that he did. Like, Benil Daryush is just not built to take damage. He is a great fighter, and he's got some fantastic takedown defense, a lot of power in the paws. I'm not negating that at all or discounting it or or saying it wouldn't be effective against islam i think that grappling wise it would have been a very unique test for islam makachev because i think benil could have defended a good amount of the takedowns um but i think that with how good islam striking is he would have landed something on the feet and and put and put benil away quickly you know knocked down Oliveira, had dustin in I don't, I don't want to say he hurt Dustin on the feet necessarily, but he got some good shots off on Dustin. There was a fantastic knee in the clinch that Islam landed that I was like, dude, that could probably take out a good amount of people, Benil Daryush included. Um, Jack Della Maddalena is the most stylistically fit to beat Leon Edwards. So I want to highlight the, the word stylistically. Most stylistically fit. That, to me, is an interesting one because... While Jack Della has some great submission defense and uh, all that, he's, he's, he gets taken down pretty frequently. I mean, Gilbert Burns was on his way to beating him until Jack landed the knee in the third and then ended the fight. Basil Hafez was going back and forth and having a lot of success against him. You could look back in Jack Della Maddalena's UFC career, and I remember there was a... Uh, Gosh, I'm forgetting the name off the top of my dome right now. But let's see. Ramazan Amit had him in, you know, a deep submission, right? So it's it's like Jack allows these positions to be put on him um, and does get out of it and then does get back to the boxing, and it's, it's pretty impressive. But I don't know if I would say most stylistically fit to beat Leon Edwards because if I'm Leon Edwards and I've got a dude who's very boxing heavy in front of me, it, again, his game revolves around the leg kicks and working the downstairs to open up, you know, the, the, the top of the body and the head. So I feel stylistically he would be one of the not weaker ones in the top five to beat Leon Edwards. But I don't know if I would say stylistically. I think it's a great fight. And I think Jack Della Maddalena has a great chance to beat Leon Edwards. But when you look at it on paper, stylistically, I feel like it, om it would almost favor Leon. Because what's going to give Leon Edwards trouble? Probably someone who's much more grapple-focused, who can make him think about that. On the feet, I don't think Jack Della's boxing is going to be able to really... has going to be a controversial take a little bit, but I feel Leon Edwards is a little bit more skilled on the feet than Jack Della is. And madeline has got great hands. But, you know, when you're having a glorified hard spar with Kevin Holland and split decision with Basil Hafez, and again, you're on your way to losing against Gilbert Burns. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I just I just think that there have been instances of Jack Della's UFC career 
which again has been very impressive. Where I would say Leon Edwards is probably going to win that, you know, 65 to 35, right? So six and a half times out of 10, I feel like Leon beats Jack Della. Maybe that's, maybe that's controversial. Let me know. <clears throat> John Jones is, n is not the GOAT because of his PED usage. I agree with that. I feel like it's kind of something that really um, invalidates you from the conversation of greatest of all time. And, and you could say, oh, well, Osterine or, or the PEDs that he's on, they don't help you with technique. They don't help you with all these certain, you know, wrinkles of mixed martial arts and inside the cage, right? But I, I feel like that's not really a fair argument because, again, if you're taking PEDs, then your ability to recover is better. Your ability to train more is, is better consistently without injury. Um, I think the, the way that it just affects your athleticism which john jones has benefited greatly from earlier in a career in his career right the length the nastiness of john jones you just you just don't know how much the peds played a part and truthfully i think the question is which fights was he not on something for you know i think this is the same conversation i have for tj dillashaw where people go oh he was the greatest of all time but then you you look at the urine samples and the popping and you're like, well, I don't, I don't have confidence in saying that any of these were clean, right? I don't have any confidence in saying that, you know, oh, he just popped for this one and he just used it for this one. No, I feel like if he used it for that one, then he probably used it for this one. And I could apply that to John Jones. If he used it for, uh, you know, the Daniel Cormier rematch, then he, who's stopping him from using it against, uh, you know, Shogun Hula back in the day or when he fought Lyoto Machida or uh, any of these other fantastic performances? where you sit back and you go, hmm, was he on the performance enhancing drugs then? I just don't know. So I, I agree. I think he's he's kind of discounted. If you, cause it's like, oh, it's almost like, this is gonna be a weird tangent, but it's like speed running, you know? Every time there's a new wrinkle in a speed running uh, of a game or something, then you create different categories. You go, oh, speed running without glitches or speed running with glitches or speed running with this wall hack versus without this wall hack. So I think the GOAT conversation could be segmented the same way, whereas greatest of all time with PEDs included, greatest of all time without PEDs included. And John Jones would be absolutely barred from the without PED GOAT conversation. Um, but for people that still have him as the GOAT, that's fine, but it has to be within a category where he is validated which is one where you're okay with that and a lot of combat sports fans are fine with it that's the reality <laughs> a lot a lot of mma fans go oh you know he used performance enhancing drugs no problem all right let's speed run the last couple of these sugar slumps marab cold i think he tkos marab to Volish, really the 12 to 6 elbow is the same as a 3 to 9 i think yeah I, I again i need to understand a little bit more about why the 12 to 6 is exactly banned i know it's you know you can't just come straight down on someone but you can throw a knee that's like 12 to 6 on the feet, right? So what what is the reasoning for banning 12 to 6 elbows? Champions should absolutely lose their belt for getting disqualified. I think if there's like a disqualification or there's a no contest in a UFC title fight, then the belt being voided is something I could maybe agree with, you know? Because nobody technically won it on that night. So for a champ, it can't be considered a defense. I think it's lame to retain in those instances. Um, you know, like for instance, Aljamain Sterling and Piotr Jan. I don't think Aljamain should have been awarded the belt. I just think that they should have booked the rematch as soon as possible and uh, then gotten it out of the way. Sean Brady will be a champ in the future if he improves his striking. I don't know if I agree with that. I think Sean Brady's got world-class grappling. Um... But, uh, you know, Michael Chiesa was tuning him up in the third round. If him and Chiesa was five rounds, I think Mike Chiesa would have been able to TKO him. Obviously, Bilal Muhammad took his unbeaten streak and finished him in the second round and looked fantastic on the feet doing it. Uh, so I'm just like, if, if those guys are able to exploit it and you're already in the UFC, I, I, I just, I don't think so. I mean, I I don't want to be a dick, but I, I feel like Sean Brady's going to have a hard time getting by. For instance, like, like, Jack Della Maddalena and Sean Brady is a good stylistic matchup because I think Sean's going to be able to exploit Jack Della the same way that Gilbert did. Um, but, again, on the feet, I just feel like he gets tuned. Burns and Brady, that's... I think that I think they're booked. I'm 99% sure that, that 
I saw that that was announced. That's a great fight. It's going to be a good test on the ground for Sean Brady, and Gilbert Burns has heat in his hands. He's a bit older. Gilbert Burns is absolutely a bit older. Um, but if Sean Brady gets through Gilbert, then I think uh, the big dog's comment gets a little bit more credibility. <clears throat> Izzy's going to come back and own the whole middleweight division again. Wouldn't be shocked for him to win against Drickus, um, owning the whole middleweight division. I don't think he can do laps like he did before. I don't think he's going to be able to um, you know, win laps on these guys like he did in the past. Right now, Ilya beats Max 49-46. to 46. Disagree. Hard disagree. I don't see that occurring at all. The Connor that beat Eddie beats Khabib. I disagree. I disagree with that. UFC 205, Connor McGregor is one of the best lightweights, uh, period, I would say. But again, we have to remember that he's at 155 pounds. Connor McGregor is like two and three. He beat uh, Eddie, lost to. Hold on, let's let me let me Google this real quick. Uh, Connor McGregor topology. The people have people have this weird. <clears throat> <coughs> oh God, um, weird thought of Connor at at 155 pounds, which which I just don't really understand. I mean, he hasn't had that many fights there. So if we look at all of these details expanded. So, um, his first lightweight fight was... So, the Nate Diaz fights were welterweight. That was 170 pounds. And, yeah, Jose Aldo, that was featherweight. Featherweight, just double-checking here. I don't think he had any lightweight bouts during the featherweight tenure. Yeah, so his first lightweight bout officially in the UFC was when he beat Eddie Alvarez. So he's 1-0 at lightweight, and then loses to Khabib, 1-1 at lightweight, beats Donald at 170, so again, discounted, 1-2 at lightweight, 1-3 at lightweight. He's had four UFC lightweight fights, and he's only won one of them. So I'm going to... I'm going to say no. I don't think the Connor that beats Eddie beats Khabib. Um, it, that was a great stylistic fight for Connor. Again, on paper, that was that was um, a really good matchup for him. But no, he's, he's not a great UFC. He doesn't have a great UFC lightweight career. So he's not the greatest lightweight of all time that some people have said. Uh, let's let's burn through a couple more and then let's close out of this. Aspen will be the goat of heavyweights. Padilla is pound for pound number two. If Alex Padilla beats uh, Yuri Prohaska again, then pound for pound number one. Fuck it, give it to him. Why not? Aspen will be the goat of the heavyweight division. I wouldn't be surprised if Tom Aspinall can put together a career that has people saying he's the greatest heavyweight of all time. Jones ducked Rumble by getting into that accident. Who knows? Uh, Izzy beats Padilla again. Love to see it. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, Ilya K.O.'s Max, no chance. Pantoja beats O'Malley, no. No. I mean, if you've seen the sparring footage from years ago, and again, I'm, that was years ago, each person's developed. Um, but, I mean, O'Malley was handling him way back in the day, and I think Sean's gotten significantly better. I think Pantoja's great, but he's, he's too hittable. I mean, Steve Urseg was tuning him up, and in my opinion, Steve Urseg won that fight. So then you take him up 10 pounds against a big, lanky 135-er. I think O'Malley TKO's Pantoja in three rounds. Uh, Demetrius Johnson over John Jones. Wouldn't hate that. Don't hate that at all. Max knocks out Islam. I like that. See? This is a take that I think could have people pointing swords at you. Uh, I like Holloway knocking out Islam. I think that it could happen. I think Max could overwhelm him and find a TKO late in the fight if he's able to stay on the feet. Um, but I'd love to see Max Holloway and Islam Makacha. Pereira is overrated. No, he's not. Shut up. Kobe's still better than most of the top 15. Oh, gosh. If I was in a bar and I heard someone say this, I would absolutely... I would attack them. Uh, <laughs> no. I, Kobe Covington is not better than... Kamaru Usman, he's not better than Bilal, he's not better than Shavkat, he's not better than Jack Della, he's not better than Gilbert Burns, he's not better than Ian Gary, he's not better than Sean Brady, maybe he could beat Stephen Thompson, not better than Jeff Neal, I don't believe that he's better than, than Joaquin Buckley, I think Buckley can beat him, I think he could probably beat up Neil Magny, he could probably beat up Luke, I don't think he beats MVP, and honestly, Colby Covington versus Kevin Holland, I, I give slightly to Covington, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Kev caught him. That's just what I'm saying. 
wouldn't be shocked if Kevin caught him. Colby Covington is not good. He is not good. He is an aged commodity at 170 pounds who has put together a very forgettable UFC career. I'll expand more on this. I'll make a full video on this shit because I do not like um, his career. Like His person aside, you look at Colby Covington's career and you just go, oh, that's it? That's all you've done? Why did I feel you've done more? That's the exact takeaway when you look at Covington. JDM's cocky. He's not as good as he thinks, and he's boring as fuck to watch. Eh, disagree. Um, prefer the early days, 2002 to 2013, before it became technical. <laughs> there was a charm about two brawlers just swinging away. Now it's full of loser fans who bitch and moan on the internet about anything. Should have gate kept it. Wow, that's a crazy take. Honestly, like... For these types of people, I highly suggest BKFC. Um, I'm not even bullshitting. I'm not even bullshitting with you at all. I highly suggest you go watch Bare Knuckle Fighting because I think it has everything you want. It's got low-level technical fighting. It's people that are just swinging and banging. Great knockouts. Great action. And I think people, um, I think people sleep on BKFC at times. I enjoy it. I like the product. I think it's very different from other combat sports. Um, you know organizations that are out there and they have some great fights mike perry the story of mike perry and bkfc is one of the best in recent memory i would say in combat sports so for the people that think oh new ufc is bad because it's so technical and the level of mixed martial arts has gotten so good go back to watching 7-eleven parking lot fights in bkfc um and leave us alone <laughs> okay that's been some uh, some hot takes some conspiracy theories which one is uh is one that you have what's a take that you think is a hot one let me know down below and i will respond to it like subscribe i'll see you in the next one adios